What is up YouTube, Joan and Joe back here with quite possibly one of my favorite deck themes in the game. Shiranui is probably one of my favorite Duel Links decks, but sadly in the TCG it does struggle a bit more for a few reasons. The deck is still probably one of the best solo gate structures to build off of still, capable of getting you to platinum and beating quite a good portion of meta decks if you get the right cards. Shiranui is at heart a zombie synchro deck that revolves around their monsters getting effects off by banishing themselves or others. There is a good amount of cards for the deck, but honestly I'm not a fan of the field spell or most of the spells and traps. There may be three amazing Shiranui cards that I can say your plays will revolve around, and those are the Tuner Spectral Sword, the Monster Solitaire, and the Trap Swallow Slash. Spectral Sword is a unique tuner that can banish itself and a non-tuner from the grave to special summon any zombie synchro monster from the extra deck that matches the levels. Now the trick with Spectral Sword is that it can bypass synchro requirements, so if you look in the extra deck Spectral can actually summon Archfiend Zombie Skull, even though it lists Plague Spreader Zombie as the required tuner. Solitaire is probably one of the most common cards to run in any zombie deck as it can summon any zombie tuner with zero defense, the most common target being Unizombie, the best zombie tuner in the game. When Solitaire is banished, he can summon another banished Shiranui to make even more synchro plays possible, if you bring back Spectral. Last but not least, Swallow Slash is probably one of my favorite zombie traps ever. Not restricted to Shiranui. In Shiranui decks, however, its other effect comes into play where you can banish er any Shiranui from the deck, including Spirit Master for a third pop, or Squire to fix your hand. A better Icarus attack, pretty much. Those Shiranui cards aside, your main starters will be Unizombie or Solitaire, with Squire being the secondary option who can summon a Spectral Sword Tuner from the deck. It did get negated a lot when I tried to summon it, but Solitaire and Unizombie are subject to the same treatment. Sadly, the normal summon is very vulnerable in this deck, but the main thing you want to get is Spectral Sword in the grave and your Zombie World combo setup. A lot of people dislike the Zombie World engine, but I feel it is essential to make some decent defensive boards to stop the meta. Doom King Balladrock is too good providing a negate and banish on top of getting draws each time it comes back if you have Vampire Sucker on the field. A lot of your monsters do well sitting in the grave, so the one thing I wish I could afford would be Danger Monsters to discard dead monsters, especially if you have multiple normal summons. Twin Twisters and Droplets help with this and they work really well in Platinum against the Eldritch meta and Super Boards. Shiranui Shogun Saga is the damage dealer capable of banishing a zombie from the grave to gain its attack points, while Sun Saga has non-targeting destruction by shuffling zombie synchros back into the extra. Note that while Zombie World is up, your non-zombie synchros still count for this, so Formula Synchron or Shooting Riser can still spin back for this. I will always say Psyframe Lord Omega is mandatory in zombie decks, so definitely consider it to put back banished cards into the grave. The main combo I like to go for, if available, is to Unizombie and Necro World Banshee into the grave, and then getting an extender of some sorts to go into Halka Fibrax, summoning Glow of Bloom from the deck for easier Doom King access. Ideally, you would have Jackal Bolin to synchro with into Omega, but you can also go Link Karibo if you have it. The main goal is getting Doom King Disruptions, Zombie World, and going into Formula to go into Sun Saga on your opponent's turn for at least one pop by spinning Formula back into the extra deck. Baron will be better when it comes out, but for now this board provides some nice defense. As you might have noticed, for this meta I am always going to main deck Twin Twisters and Duster if I can, since Eldritch and other decks are currently a plague. Droplets is also needed if you want to have any chance of playing against Drytron going second, and even then it is a tough game regardless. Still, I had a pretty amazing win ratio with the deck in Plat 1, so getting to these techs is highly recommended, along with the Danger Monsters to help potential bricks like I mentioned if you can get them. I'm currently in the phase of being real stingy with my crafting points, so not everything I want is accessible yet. Onto the replays, there are some extra ones here since the deck went so well, but the first one of course is against everyone's favorite Golden Lord Trap deck. It is intimidating to see a deck drop 5 back row at the start of a turn going first, but luckily we managed to win the coin flip here. Aside from back row removal, banishing Eldritch with Call by the Grave is another big help when facing them, along with banishing their traps in general if possible. Here like I mentioned, Squire Negate hits immediately and as you can see a hand like this would partially benefit from having Danger Monsters in the hand. Getting Spectral Sword in the Grave ASAP is essential since its Synchro effect can only trigger on a turn it wasn't sent to the Grave. Since my hand is lackluster, a nice Gold Sarcophagus can banish another Squire for a draw, while also setting up what I need in the Grave. It's not the best thing, but it helps. The Clutch Duster here was very much needed as Skill Drain is possibly one of my most hated cards in the game. At 3 copies, they always seem to have it, but now without Scarlet, our opponent has an open board for us to an attack. This is an amazing opportunity for lethal, but sadly this deck cannot generate it that easily without proper setup. Solitaire being in the grave can assist with this if you banish it with Spectral Sword, as it can bring back the Spectral Sword again for Shogun Saga or other shenanigans. Since we have the dead Mizuki, I decided to go for Vampire Sucker since it can get us a draw, 
but aside from that there is not much I can do. The Shiranui Skill Saga Link Monster isn't a common option to go into but since I rarely see it, I decided to try it out in this duel along with an Archfiend Zombie Skull. The Synchro protects all zombies from card effect destruction while Skill Saga protects all fire monsters from being destroyed by battle. It's a weird unintended combo but Shiranui Samurai Saga could have worked just as well. Now before I continue let me point out that my destiny draws in this deck have been ridiculous. From getting twisters or droplets when I need them or even the Necro World Banshee off a of Vampire Sucker to discard it with the Squire Banish. My luck during duels was fraudulent and I'm not ashamed to say it but this is why I love the deck. Random draws and discards can lead to additional combo pieces in play so I definitely will continue playing this when the zombie support comes out in the future. Keep in mind I do remember my opponent has two outlist traps in the grave to set Scarlet from the deck but I do have the twin twister needed to shut that down. From here the advantage is clear despite Eldritch hitting the field as I am confident he by himself is not a threat even with his trap goonies. The main thing to worry about would have been him getting some ridiculous extravagance top deck with ice dragons prison and another crazy trap or something but we made it luckily. Now sadly I do actually miss lethal here and it's quite sad. Thanks to Ghost Sark, I do get the Squire play but I decide to go into my personal favorite Shiranui Synchro Squire Saga. It's an odd level 7 so it only works with the level 3 tuner but I still enjoy its effect more than most of the other monsters. Now the proper play as you saw there is to banish Squire Saga itself to get all 3 effects, clearing our opponent's board for lethal but Skill Saga can also revive the Squire Saga from the banish zone so that's even more damage than I intended. The misplay in the last turn was not being used to banishing Squire Saga as I usually banish from the grave but it doesn't bite us back too hard as you can see. Choking that win up, that is going to be it for me. There are four other replays so please enjoy and please like the video and subscribe if you want to see more.